Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Friday Forum. My name is Elvin Buku, and I serve as the Deputy Director for the Foundation for Tacoma Students. A foundation's mission is to build and strengthen the Graduate Tacoma Community Movement of over 350 community partners to help every child achieve success from cradle to college and career. As part of our organization's response to COVID, uh, Friday Forums were launched to provide locally uh, focused information and resources to community partners and families. And over the past several weeks, we've covered a number of topics, including mentorship, um, engaging learners online, kind of the state of Tacoma Public Schools overall, and I've heard multiple examples from multiple community partners about how we're engaging our students. Today, though, there is a specific group of students we're focusing on, which is our incredible class of 2020. Uh, when, when we started the Graduate Tacoma Movement, uh, it was launched about 10 years ago, high-level goals were set with this year in mind and this specific class in mind. Uh, and we have accomplished some great things uh, during that time period, but no one uh, could have predicted back then what the landscape of this class would be, given the crisis we're all experiencing today. So just as we did then, though, uh, our community is looking to respond to our students' needs in order to close out the senior year as strongly as possible. And we know absolutely how special that senior year should be and is uh, to us and our community. So today, uh, I have the pleasure of serving as moderator for a panel of community partners who are deeply involved in supporting our senior class of 2020 and a special guest, um, a member of said class. So I'd like to go uh, around and do some panelist introductions. And if, when I introduce you, please wave to the crowd uh, so that everybody knows who I'm introducing. With that, I'd like to first introduce Melody Rodriguez, College Prep Advisor with College Success Foundation, who is joined by the fabulous Fabi Rodriguez, uh, no relation, by the way, uh, who is a senior at Mount Tahoma High School. Thank you both for joining us here today. Secondly, we have Dr. Doug Hostetter, who's the Executive Director for Secondary Education for Tacoma Public Schools. Doug, thank you for joining us today. And last but not least, we have Ms. Lori Parrish, TRIO Youth Program Manager with Metropolitan Development Council. Lori, thanks for your time today and thanks for joining us. So with that, I'd like to pass it off first to Mel and Fabi to kick us off. All right, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Friday. Um, I am really happy to be here and to have Fabi with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start, and then I will introduce Fabi in a few minutes. Um, so let's see here. Pardon me if there are any technical difficulties, but um, let's see. Okay. So um, as we know, the class of 2020, their, their senior year has totally been derailed by COVID-19. And like them, I think as service providers, we are adapting um, and just having to, you know, rethink how we do things, rethink how we communicate. And what I wanted to do was just kind of share some of the challenges we are seeing. Um, College Success Foundation has been around for over 20 years. This is our 20th year, actually. We are located, we have staff in five high schools, the five comprehensive high schools, and six middle schools. Um, our mission is to, to provide a unique integrated system of scholarships and support to inspire underserved low-income students to finish high school, graduate from college, and succeed in life. So right now, um, what we're seeing, so I work at Mount Tahoma High School. I officially have 45 achievers um, in my, my class. So these are students who um, joined our program our junior, their junior year. But over the course of senior year, we have added additional students. So we're probably at 60. So 15 of them are adopted achievers, and then there are other seniors that we support who are friends of achievers or friends of adoptees. Um, what we're seeing in terms of the challenges that students are facing, um, you know, I think a lot of us know what they are, but, you know, and we, or we can think, we can guess what they are, but I think the biggest one was that for a lot of students, school is that sense of structure, that community, that sense of safety, and just, the, just that place where they can get the resources they need. It's, um, I had a student tell me on the 13th, the day before, the day last day of school, who's a freshman, that said, 
you know, um, yeah, I go to my classes and I know that's why I come to school, but my favorite part of being in school is being in this office and just having my lunch and feeling safe and being able to talk to my friend without, you know, feeling like anyone's going to judge me. So for a lot of students, that, that sense, I mean, school was their home, um, you know, sometimes. And so I think that just dealing with that loss has been really difficult. And as a provider, I saw a lot of that in the first three, four weeks. Um, students just were like, they just couldn't get over it. You know, they just couldn't, it's just like, what do I do? What do I do? Um, I think the other challenges now that we've been in it, um, we're on week eight, it's just the changes at home and their role within the family. Um, you know, a lot of students knew that they were going to take care of younger siblings when they, this, when school ended. Um, but now, you know, we have parents who are no longer working, um, parents who cannot, who are not eligible for unemployment. And now that student has become the main breadwinner. breadwinner. Um, several of our students are working in the grocery stores now, you know, working in the food industry. Um, and so they, you know, their paycheck, they've gone from working part-time during the school year to working full-time and sometimes more. Um, the challenge, motivation, purpose, and energy, you know, it's, it's really, when you're part of a community that is, you know, community of students or just a school community that is just bursting with energy, there's lots of activity, and like if you're part of a trio group or a chief group, you're in this community with other young people who are working towards similar goals you feed off of that. And, you know, that it was a big loss when we went remote and we lost that in-person contact. Um, just the overall sense of loss. I mean, yes, we know like the classes and all that stuff, but these are, you know, these are students who worked, what, 12 years, 13 years um, to get to this year, to get to prom, to get, you know, to graduation, the senior awards night, Mount T, they're really big on multicultural assembly and are, you know, for a lot of the seniors, this was the year that they were going to perform for the first first and last time at Mount T's multicultural, which was supposed to be, I think, March 23rd. So that was like, you know, really a kind of, I don't want to say traumatic, but it was a very big loss for a lot of them. And then I just think the increased need for non-academic support. So the first few weeks, it was just like, just listening and talking to the students as they were just processing. Um, you know, it wasn't the right time for me to just launch into, okay, we got to get your FAFSA verification done. It's, you know, you know, you got to do this. Did you check your email? And so I think these challenges that we've seen as um, advisors, so myself and my peers, um, you know, that really made us reevaluate how we work. I mean, we've had to change because students are no longer having, you know, they're not on that school schedule, that 7.30 to 2.05. Um, you know, my office hours typically were nine to six, um, but I basically work probably, I mean, I'm, I'm just accessible. As, if I'm awake, I'm accessible because the challenge is that our students, like some of my students don't even get up until like two in the afternoon. So I don't even do a group Zoom until after 3.30. Um, I've told students, you know, we can schedule them later. I've tried to do some in the morning, but it's, a, it's about meeting students where they are. Some students work at night and they close. So early morning, you know, mornings aren't good for them. You know, sometimes it's squeezing a, a call in or a check in in between as they're getting ready for work. You know, they have you on um, speakerphone and you know that they're running around the room doing things or they're putting on their makeup or brushing their teeth. So, you know, as a service provider, you know, we've really had to rethink how we serve students. And even though my title is college prep advisor, I knew in the beginning of this, um, the time away from school and, you know, that, that couldn't be my focus the first couple of weeks, the first few weeks. Um, but I was really intentional about just being consistent in letting the students know that I was available, even if, you know, I wasn't getting any response back. I was just constantly just letting, you know, putting little, sending out little different things. Um, so, you know, with that said, just moving past the challenges, students like, you know, whether they like it or not, there's a lot for them to do right now. Um, I'm looking at this as students who have expressed an interest in continuing their education um, beyond high school, 
the two and four year students, um, there's a long to-do list. And it's really hard to get to that to-do list when you're looking at the challenges in the previous slide. So, I mean, these are the things I'm constantly telling my students. And some of, I started off going in order and then I realized like, I'm not gonna have enough room on the slide. But I think the crucial thing right now is, and this is something I tell my students even when I see them every single day, check and read your emails daily. Um, that seems to be a big challenge because the schools now are, everything's done through email. Your financial, they're notifying you about your financial aid. They're notifying you about documents, everything. And if you're lucky and you've been admitted to school, you have admissions counselors calling you. And students don't like to talk on the phone. So, you know, it's like even reminding them, answer your phone, listen to the voicemail and return the phone call. So, you know, reviewing financial aid offer letters, I have spent a lot of time with students. We've, you know, I get screenshots of letters. Um, I've been put, like we do an analysis and then I share the screen on Zoom. Um, you know, that's a big thing because before they can make a decision, they kind of need to know what's being offered and how much it's gonna cost. And I know this sounds very easy. It's easier said than done. It's ask questions and reach out. If you've been admitted to several schools, and the admissions counselor is attempting to get a hold of you through email, through phone calls, reach out, call them back, ask questions, or even just tell them you're not interested in the school anymore. Um, and I know I'm directing this as if I'm talking to seniors. Um, this could also, you know, for those of you working with seniors or parents of seniors, you know, these are, you know, these are just some basic things that they should be thinking about as if they're moving forward to a two and four year. But, um, you know, I think, they, you know, they have to ask questions and reach out because they need to know all these things. They have to have those questions answered before they make a decision. They need to consider the op all the options and make the decision that is best for them. Um, you know, and then, you know, once they make that decision, there's more things to do. Um, you know, financial aid, verification, enrollment fees, signing up for orientations and assessments, Signing up for direct deposit. In some cases, for a lot of my students, it's opening a bank account because they've never had to, you know, direct deposit. And then sign up for housing. So, you know, amidst all the challenges that they're facing, there's a lot that has to be done. And, you know, technically, we have, I think, a month left um, before school is um, officially done for seniors, maybe like five weeks. And, you know, not everything has to be done before those five weeks, but they should be pretty close to being done because then there's a whole other that will continue past this. Um, so I'm going to, you know, take a pause on that. And I have the pleasure of introducing one of my seniors that I talk to all the time, um, Fabiola Rodriguez. Um, I've been working with her since her junior year. And she is, you know, she's one of our student leaders in our group, but even at our school, she's pretty active at the school. She was one of those seniors who was performing in the multicultural assembly and it was, you know, it couldn't exist and, you know, it was canceled with a lot of other things. And so, you know, we wanted to make sure to offer a student perspective on kind of the realities of COVID-19. And so Fabi has graciously agreed to participate and I have some questions for her. Um, and so I'm going to just launch into that. So Abby, thank you again for doing this. I know you have a busy schedule and this is like <laughs> your only day off this week. So okay. we really appreciate it. So I'm just going to launch into your questions. So how has, you know, COVID-19 and not being in school, um, been a challenge for you or have worked for you? Like, you know, what has been the hardest things about this? Well, the hardest things is like figuring out where and what time I should start on my school stuff. Um, it's hard not ha going into the office and having you tell me what to do or like what I should be doing um, and like deadlines. It's hard not having like a support system in front of you and not going to school and balancing, trying to figure out what time I should do it. Cause now, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> now, I work full time and I work like over 20 hours a week. And sometimes I can't fit it into my daily schedule. So I'll just have to work um, on my school stuff 
once I get out, which is like at 11 p.m. And it's really like, it's hard, but um, in the beginning, I, I was so clueless. Like, I didn't know what to do. Um, like me and my friends would just go back and forth and be like, what should we do? Like, is this it? Like, it was just like, everything was just taken away from us. And we were just so lost. But um, after that, I just started contacting you and you told me that there were still more things that I had to do. Um, like for you to see, look at my financial aid package, um, accept my enrollment, and just know that there was more things to look forward to, not um, and not just be sad over um, the school shutting down. But it it's been kind of hard, yeah. Um, just knowing when you know when to do everything, balance everything out, it's been really hard um, with my schedule and during school i had like a perfect schedule like i go to school go to the gym go to work and it was like that and then um and also going to dance practice and it's just hard because i have to make a new schedule and a lot of people i know a lot of students are also struggling with this because some of us will wake up at like 3 p.m and then our whole day just went by and we don't want to stay up and do our work like you know because when something's not right in front of you, it's easier, it's like harder to do. Like going to school, like, okay, you're there, you might as well do it, you know? But like, in like when you're at home, like you could easily just go watch the TV, go on your phone. Like you don't have someone there to like tell you and help you like on what you have to do in assignments. So yeah, that's just been the hardest thing. I know too like you juggle family responsibilities like you have a younger brother and you know with your mom working you know you sometimes run errands for her because your guys' shifts are opposite of each other so um it is it's about that balance so what have what has been you know what have been your strongest support system as you have tried to make the most of your last year of high school this last semester um, my biggest support system has been you mm-hmm. and um, the girls group, Alas, with Alma. Um, you guys are the main two people who really stay in touch with me. And I know some of my other fellow um, classmates who are in Achievers. You guys really um, make the time for us. Like I said, like when I come home late from work, I know that you'll always be there. And like if I call you, you'll answer right away or a text. If I don't know, um, like what, who to call for my admissions for U of T, you're always there for me. And I really appreciate that because you really know like my schedule and just to have you guys there, like you guys make time for us, like Zoom calls, um, you have like a morning time for people who wake up early. You'll have like an afternoon time for us who wake up late or have things to do. And I appreciate how Um, even as I'm getting ready for work, you still make the time to call me, even if it's just like 10 minutes, um, just so we could catch up and figure out what else I need to do for, um, the fall. And yeah, it's, it's honestly just been you guys. And I haven't really heard anything from the school or my principal or, um, the Tacoma district. I've like, I've just heard from you guys and it's like, I don't know. I've only gotten one email from my teacher and that's it. Like, it just sucks like how um, they're not really there for us, how you guys are. And I feel like it's, it sucks because some other students, like they don't really have that support system, like how I do, but that's basically it. Yeah. Well, and I know that um, your peers are a good support because like yeah. you guys have a senior Facebook group that you guys have for Mount T and mm-hmm. that recently you guys approached Mr. McColgan, the principal, and he's, he developed a Microsoft Classroom or something with all yeah. the seniors so that you guys can voice your concerns and ask questions directly to him. Mm-hmm. So, which is really nice because that was as a result of you guys advocating for yourselves. Yeah. Seniors. And so um, what are your plans for next year? Um, my plans is to go to U of T and um, it, I'm still undecided on what to study. 
I think I want to go with becoming a dermatologist, but that's mostly it and just working and just trying to um, just have fun and just make up for the time that I lost during this um, pandemic because being stuck inside and like working all the time, you, I kind of want to break from it already, you know? So just to um, like, just live life in the moment, like not take it for granted. Thank you, Fabi. Um, appreciate your honesty. Um, so as I, sorry. It's okay. So just moving forward, like as providers or as seniors, I think the best, the best advice I would give and just guidance, like I think reassuring students, seniors in particular, um, it's not too late. Um, I think that, you know, you feel defeated right now because things that, like Fabi said, things are just taken away from you. Um, but it's not too late. You, there are other things for you to look forward to. Yes, you can be sad that you're not going to be calm. You're not going to have your graduation ceremony, but you will have other opportunities to celebrate your accomplishments. And there are, there, you're in community with people who want to celebrate your accomplishments. And then I think it's okay to be unsure about your next step. Um, you know, that's the reality of getting older. Um, you throw in a pandemic, so your plan to go away to Western may no longer be the plan. You know, now you're looking at UW, TCC, or uh, Pierce. It's okay. Um, I think the biggest thing I would say moving forward is don't be afraid to reach out. Yes, you may not know who to reach out to, um, but where I would start, if you have a friend who's kind of, you know, has support, like, you know, Fabi has friends who are not achievers, you know, invite them to the Zoom meeting for your achiever group. Invite them to, you know, ask if you can introduce, you know, if they ask you for help, ask your trail advisor if you can, you know, have your friend come. Um, you know, we all have to adjust, you know, but I think the priority right now is, it's really about you as the senior or the class of 2020, we want to support you to be successful. And it's like, this is not the time to be afraid. There is no wrong, there's no wrong, and you know, there's nothing that you can ask that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you don't know what the question is. Talk to somebody. And I think later on, there's gonna be some information about who the possible somebodies are. So thank you very much. And we appreciate the opportunity. Um, this, the little quote that I have up here was actually in quote, uh, we put in, to our senior um, little pack graduation package. It was their cord, their honor cord for being an achiever, um, a little CSF class of 2020 sticker. And it was this quote because, you know, they do, they feel like it's the end, but it really is, it's a beginning. I mean, they're gonna be stronger for it. And, you know, this is an experience that they will never, nobody else is gonna have this experience, hopefully, no other class. And so, you know, anyway, thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, thank you both. Uh, thank you both for joining us again today. I know time, uh, time is stretched. And Fabi, I know you have to uh, take off at around 1.30, so feel free to hop off whenever you can. But um, I just want to understand, I mean, underscore the relationship with the, the, you and your, your mentors at Mel and the organizations that help you is awesome. And I know a lot of that information is hard to share. It's very personal. So I, I want to thank you on behalf of all the audience um, and all those listening. Uh, we congratulate you on the class of 2020. Thank you. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll keep it moving. Um, all right. I'd like to pass it off uh, to Dr. Doug Hossetter, again, Executive Director of Secondary Education. Kind of just a state, you know, there's, there's a lot of question marks, I guess. A lot of question marks more so than answers these days. And I know the district has been moving fast to try and respond to enormous need. Um, so thank you for being here and thank you for uh, being willing to share kind of your perspective uh, on the work. So Doug, I'll pass it off to you. About our senior class, since that's the focus of the forum, um, I'd like to start off with um, just echoing what Elvin said at the very beginning and Fabi uh, so eloquently talked about, you know, this is a tough time for seniors. They've got a lot of barriers and hurdles uh, they have to get over. They're, they're being asked to communicate in ways uh, with teachers that they never communicated with, like via the phone and via email. So in Tacoma Public Schools, we're really reaching out multiple methods, email, our website, phone calls, even uh, home visits when appropriate to try to make sure that our students are feeling connected and they know what they need to do uh, to make it to their next steps. 
So I'm going to start with something that was real positive. Uh, last Wednesday, so May 6th, Tacoma started its first uh, cap and gown distribution events. And those occurred at Mount Tahoma and at Wilson on May 6th. And today, uh, Lincoln and Stadium just finished up their cap and gown distribution events. And what that looked like was students came in their cars, they're all decorated with class of 2020 and, you know, go T-Birds or go Abes, whatever the school is. And the staff would line up, social distancing, of course, um, wearing masks and just applauding the kids, uh, ringing cowbells, playing music, waving pom-poms, clapping, shouting. It was just a real festive event that I think uh, the students and their families truly appreciated, but so did the staff. The staff really appreciated seeing the students. They haven't seen them in eight weeks, and this might be the last time they have the opportunity to see them. So that's really neat. Uh, FOSS will be going next Monday, May 11th, and then our partner school, Sammy Soda and IDEA, uh, kick it off or end it in, on Tuesday, May 12th. And the FOSS and the Sammy Soda IDEA events are at the FOSS High School parking lot. So that, that's a neat, fun thing that we've done for our seniors during this time. I'm just gonna quickly share a slide. I certainly will not get in the weeds of this. But the questions come up about graduating class in requirements. And so I'm just sharing this very kind of 30,000 foot overview of graduation requirements for the class of 2020. We like to think of them as three different buckets. Students have to earn a certain number of credits in order to uh, qualify for graduation. The state has a credit requirement of 24 credits, sometimes referred to as core 24, and of those 24 credits, 17 are core credits, which means math, science, social studies, language arts, and so on. So those are the credit buckets. And so high school uh, counselors, teachers, career counselors, um, administrators are really working to connect with students to make sure they complete the work that they're being asked to complete in order to earn the 24 credits. Now there are waiver opportunities in there for students. Uh, the state gives all districts the opportunity to waive two of the 24 credits for uh, student circumstances. So I won't get into the weeds, but there are some waiver opportunities within those 24 credits. But it's our school staff's belief based on the data tracking they're using now, that uh, the great majority of our students are on track and we're excited to see that. HSBP just stands for High School and Beyond Plan. That's also a requirement for graduations. So when students do graduate, we want them to know what their next step is, whether it's a two-year, four-year technical, military, uh, apprenticeship, world of work, wherever they are wanting, wherever they are planning to go, we want to make sure they have a plan for that. And that's the state requirement, high school and beyond plan. And then there's something called the grad pathway, which um, students can meet by in, in eight different ways. But in, most of the students meet it by meeting standard on the Smarter Balanced Assessment, which is given to them as sophomores. But if they didn't meet standard, there are seven other pathways uh, they can meet in order to meet uh, college and career readiness. So that's just a quick, um, overview of that. Um, the next kind of thing I wanted to get into just a little bit, it's been in the, in the website and I'm sure it's been a discussion uh, in the community, is the uh, Tacoma School District's graduation, uh, excuse me, grading policy uh, for the second semester of the 21-20 school year. And the school board passed, uh, approved this policy just a few weeks back, which says that students um, that were enrolled in classes can get no lower than a C grade and they can work their way up the chain all the way to an A grade. So the big takeaway here is, is that students won't earn a failing grade, but we're, we and the teachers, when I say we, the teachers and the administrators and counselors are all working with students to make sure that they're working with their teachers so that they can improve their grades. 
So they can go from a C to a C plus or maybe an A minus to an A. So students have the ability to move up this chain. They can't fall down the chain. So they can improve the grade. They can't uh, go backwards with their grade. Um, if the student was a teacher's assistant or some of our high schools have classes called advisory or seminars, those uh, classes have always been graded pass fail and they would be continued to be graded pass fail with the exception of remo removing the fail. So students that were TAs or in advisory classes automatically pass. Seniors, the big dates to keep in mind, if you're a Sammy Soda or IDEA senior, all work must be completed by June 3rd. That's because that's the graduation date for those three schools. And if you're a student in any other high schools, the work must be completed by June 11th because that's when the first set of high school graduations kick off. So that's our quick overview of our grading policy. So again, the takeaway is if you're on track, you keep working, you'll stay on track and that the policy will do no harm uh, to students. The grades cannot go down. Talk a little bit about our graduation ceremony that's getting a lot of attention in the community, I know. Um, we, Tacoma Public Schools and all staff members would love to have the traditional in-person graduation ceremony. That's what we all look forward to every year. It's a highlight for me as the uh, executive director for all the high schools. But with the current situation and with the governor's stay-at-home order, uh, we're not in all likelihood going to be able to have a traditional graduation. So we've been planning, uh, members of the central office with the school principals and the school principals with uh, leaders from their senior classes have been working on preparing virtual ceremonies, which means it'll be on uh, a, a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams meeting such as this. The principal will give an address. The superintendent will give address, the school board member will give an address, the class will be accepted by the school board member, student speakers will be included, some uh, schools are even talking about having student performers. Now having a whole band or whole orchestra isn't um, possible, but maybe a duet or a, or a solo or quartet, something like that is possible at graduation events. Um, and then we'll have a slideshow as part of the ceremony with a picture of each graduate with their cap and gown and uh, with their um, honors and awards that they might have earned during their high school career posted right there in front of their picture. So we're in the process of planning those events. Uh, principals are, are meeting with students and then I and others are meeting with those principals to continue to try to put together the most memorable and classy ceremony that we can considering the circumstances we're in. And then this last part of my message I wanna talk about is how are we supporting, how is Tacoma Public Schools supporting our students in taking that next step, in going to their post-secondary institution or even the world of work if that's what their next step is. So I wanna share just one nice partnership that we're doing with um, Degrees of Change and Graduate Tacoma and the College Success Foundation. We're putting together, or Degrees of Change has put together with College Success Foundation and, and Graduate Tacoma, have put together a survey and students are getting the link to the survey at their cap and ground distribution events. And so all they have to do is go to www.graduatetacoma.org front slash what's next seniors. And what it'll do is lead them through questions. First of all, are you a senior in Tacoma Public Schools? They click yes. And then they just kind of get led through the survey. It asks them to, to tell themselves about you so you enter your name. Your student ID number is important because we wanna make sure if you're asking for help, we get you connected to the correct school and the correct counselor who can assist you with any questions or support you're asking about. Um, they ask you for graduation plans for and after high school. Very simple survey, just kind of a little bullet, you know, you just click bubble, 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 whatever your 
your answer is. Keep going down through the survey. It asks about, if not college, what are you considering for next year? Have you completed a FAFSA, which is the federal uh, application for federal student assistance or financial application for federal student assistance or the WASFA? If you haven't, you click no, and then it'll connect you to members of College Success Foundation and Tacoma Public Schools and Degrees of Change that will be there to assist you. You can call them, they can email you, just connecting you with a support person, as Fabi was saying, is so difficult during this time. This survey is a fantastic way for seniors to get connected with the support person. There's even a, a virtual Zoom event on Thursday, May 28th. Um, if you're going to any of these local community, any of these local universities or colleges, um, again, for further support. So just a great thing that our partnership Degrees have changed, College Success Foundation, Graduate Tacoma, and Tacoma Public Schools have been working on. So if you're a senior, look for this link in your packet for um, at cap and gown distribution. And if you lose the slip of paper, it's graduatetacoma.org front slash what's next seniors. So a great partnership. And we're proud of that uh, in Tacoma Public Schools to support our seniors. One other partnership we have that we're um, very excited about is with working with Tacoma Community College. And let me pull that one up real quick. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but this brochure, if I share it, is from Tacoma Community College and it's TPS Seniors, we got you. And there's a series of senior workshops that TCC is putting on. You can see application workshops are in the dark blue. So we've already missed one of those this past Monday, but you can see there's one next Monday and Tuesday, uh, Wednesday and Monday and Wednesday and so on. And there's also financial aid workshops. You can see that in green to help students fill out their FAFSA and WASFA. And then the um, scholarship workshops are in the light blue. So a nice little brochure um, that we're putting on our school website and we're also have it on our main district website and our principals will be mentioning this in their Sunday robocall that goes home to seniors. So here's the link on the, on the uh, brochure. You can link to this and it's a great, again, partnership with uh, President Harold of TCC and Carla and Josh here in Tacoma Public Schools. Um, we're real proud of it. And again, it's another way we are trying to connect our seniors with support onto their next step. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I think that's it for now. I'll just pause and let Lori go and then answer some questions. Doug, thank you so much. That's a lot of detail. And we know you guys are juggling a lot of things. Um, also underscoring the partnership. I know you've been a champion of a lot of these collaborations at the district level. So thank you on behalf of uh, all the partners that you've mentioned. Um, I will pass it to Lori and uh, have her go. And then we'll, we'll have time, I think, a little bit for maybe one or two questions towards the end. But Lori, feel free to take it. Hello there. Um, mine was going to be pretty quick and dirty to the point, so um, we should still have plenty of time for questions. Um, so my name is Lori Parrish and I'm the Youth Education Program Manager at Metropolitan Development Council and currently those programs um, are both TRIO programs. So we have Upward Bound as well as Talent Search. Um, but one of my big goals is to also secure some funding that we can serve students outside of those TRIO standards of service. So um, being a federally funded program, unfortunately, we can't really support DREAMers officially within the, the parameters of the program. But just like Mel, I'll serve anybody and so will my staff that walk through the door. And we have another partnership that I'll highlight where that anybody in Tacoma can access. Um, that started this week. So um, for those who don't know, Upward Bound um, serves first-generation and low-income students 
and mainly focuses on those that are at risk of not graduating from high school in grades nine through 12. Um, the schools that our Metropolitan MDC program serve are Mount Tahoma, Lincoln, Wilson, which we got into right before COVID hit, literally the week before, um, FOSS and Stadium. So um, we can serve students at any of those schools. Um, Evergreen um, College and a couple other partners like Pierce also have local upward bound programs that serve schools outside of this catchment as well as these same schools. Um, what we're providing um, currently is we started with virtual tutoring through enhanced prep um one-on-one -on -one weekly advising with their advisor via zoom or teams or over the phone um doing social connection and check-ins so um we're gonna do um, a dinner and a documentary with them where we're gonna zoom a documentary together and order the food and just like be in community um field trips and cultural experiences that was a little pre-covid there but we are looking for those virtual experiences um, that we can share with the students so um, one of the things we're exploring is how to maybe do an HBCU tour um, virtually. So that's one of the, the virtual things we're working on. Um, we also do a six week summer program. And this year it's gonna be in partnership with PLU. So we're trying, in the past, the, the carrot for students was a small stipend of maybe $100 at the end of the six week program as well as um, partial high school credit um, from like CTE programs. Um, but this year we know that credit is not really gonna be the draw for students. So what we're doing is restructuring it to where we can justify it as a work study program, not like the financial aid, but in terms of TRIO. Um, and participants will be able to collect $300 a month in stipends through that. So. We're gonna have 115 spots for that. Um, and we also have vacancies in our program. So there's opportunities that I'll share um, for folks to join if they're not already a member of one of our programs. Um, we also, um, the week after COVID hit, a lot of us community partners, I know I was calling Mel and she was calling me and we were all calling everybody trying to figure out who's doing what and how we can best serve students. So we did a needs assessment to our students to just ask them, what is it you need right now? Because we can make all these assumptions, but we wanted to hear from them. And so far we've gotten 250 responses. Um, and a lot of those students as COVID is worn on have um, needed food and cleaning supplies. So I adjusted our trio dollars um, to be able to buy cleaning supplies and make kits to send with our students that request them. And we also, um, that an MOU with the Emergency Food Network to where we get 50 boxes um, of food or prepackaged and then some produce. So they get a box and a bag of fresh food um, that they can either pick up at MDC on Fridays, which is why I'm here, um, or we deliver to their home if they can't make it here. And we serve Tacoma as well as Franklin Pearson Bethel. So it's a pretty busy day, but it's also fun to get out and actually engage with the students on some level. Um, we also have school supply kits that we give to our students. Um, if students don't have a laptop or need access to one, if they enroll in our program or are currently in that, we have about 150 Chromebooks left that we could issue to students um, to use at their homes. Um, and then with Upward Bound, like I mentioned, there's the stipends. So in addition to those that participate in the summer program, our students that complete their um, their stipend checklist throughout the school year, earn up to $180 um, for that time in the year. Typically, we would split it into $60 three times a year when they really need it. And this year, we're giving it all to them at the end of the year here because we didn't get a chance to issue those before all of this hit. So um, yeah, we're working to get them to complete those stipend forms now. So talent search is a higher level touch. Um, so it's not the weekly case management that you would get with Upward Bound, but we have much more capacity to serve in these programs. So um, in Tacoma, we currently have, I'm gonna kind of estimate here, I think we have enough room for like 200 students in our Upward Bound program, and we can serve upwards of 550 through our talent search program. 
and Talent Search also focuses on low income and first generation students, but we work in the middle schools as well. So we can do grades six through 12. And the schools we serve in Tacoma um, are Mount Tahoma, Lincoln, Gray, Baker, and First Creek. Um, and as long as the, if there's another school that we don't serve, as long as there's not another TRIO program at that school, we've been given permission to also serve those students. Um, that's at middle schools as well as high schools. So Sammy Soda students, I would be more than happy to have them sent my way um, if they need any of these supports in particular. That's one site I know doesn't really have too many on-campus supports for them. Um, we provide a lot of the same things um, that we do through Upward Bound, just on a, a higher level, and we don't have the stipend. So virtual tutoring, food delivery and pickup, school supplies, Chromebooks, um, advising, also the social connection, field trips. Um, and this year, what we're doing is, um, for those of you who don't know um, MESA, it's the Math and Science, Math Engineering and Science Achievement Program and they had to cancel their Mesa day this year and we were kind of all sad together. And I was like, well, we didn't really get to do all the programming we need to do. So we're gonna actually partner on a summer program um, that middle school and high school students can participate in and we'll be promoting that before school gets out. So um, we'll make sure to get that to all of the students, hopefully through the district. And um, we have one more meeting and then we should have enough to put a flyer together and get that out to our students. Um, so this High School and Beyond is a partnership that um, came when we decided to, um, to partner with Enhanced Prep to provide their online tutoring platform for us. And with the uncertainty of how grading was going to work and then hearing, oh, okay, well, at least I, I know I'm going to get a C, um, the, the motivation to actually come in for tutoring specifically. Um, wasn't there and our attendance was really low. And I was like, you know, maybe we could morph this platform because Rachel and Luke at Enhanced Prep, who also done one of these Friday forums, are just phenomenal and have a wealth of knowledge outside of tutoring and so do their tutors. So we came up with a list of everything that students would be able to um, through these links or this QR code that's on the screen here. Um, they can log in Tuesdays from 3 to 5, Wednesdays from 11 to 1, and thanks to College Success Foundation, um, they purchase the Sundays from 3 to 5. So there's three different times a week that any student from Tacoma, as well as the other districts that MDC serves, can drop in. They'll be pre-screened, and if it's like a FAFSA or WASFA, they'll be put in a private room. They'll have access to tutoring. Um, and it could be grouped around the same subject. They all have the same packet, but they are just so talented at getting students where they need to be and portioning it out to where everybody can be served. So this is like a, a virtual village that students can kind of log into and get that support. Um, and it's open to anybody. They don't have to be in our program, but if they do fill out that survey that Dr. Doug um, referred to, they will also be linked over to this platform so they could log in. Um, and we'll be getting notified for our MDC students that complete it, but we're also going to be getting a list of any seniors that indicate they're not tied to an outside support. So we could reach out to them and encourage them to apply for one of our programs so we can get them the resources we have. Um, and again, we have spots available in both programs and how we kind of justify that platform being for everybody is there's no real other way to recruit students right now. And being a federally funded program, we have metrics we need to meet. So um, that was my little spin that I used <laughs> to make it go wider. But, um, if students follow this link or parents who are um, interested in having their students apply, um, we ask some information and that'll go to my um, program coordinator who will then determine which program we have seats in, who they're a good fit for, and we will send them an application that they can sign virtually and then we'll intake them into the program. With, and it's usually like a three-day process once we get it. So um, we would love to serve more students and we definitely want to overserve this year as well. And if anybody has questions about the programs or the food that we deliver, or if you just want a thought partner or have crazy ideas, I'm always down for those. Um, so you could just email me or give me a call or a text. Um, 
and yeah, I'd love to partner with you or support your family and your students. So thank you for being here today. Lori, thank you so much. Uh, a lot, again, of information on different ways you're supporting. Um, I'll vouch for the crazy idea thing. I think Lori is always down to have a couple crazy ideas, which is good. Um, so thank you to all of our panelists. And again, thank you also to Fabi. We do have time. I think we're going to cover one question. Um, and I think we have enough time for all three panelists to answer. Um, but I want to pose this kind of in the same order. So uh, Mel, Doug, and then Lori. But um, everybody has talked about the supports that are out there. Um, and even like capacity for support or capacity for other community members to help, especially given, um, you know, we have a lot of volunteers that want to help but may not have the relationships uh, with seniors directly. So are, are looking for different ways uh, to support. So the question is, how can uh, Tacoma community best support the class of 2020 from each of your perspectives, especially given um, kind of the state we're in where it's hard to reach certain students. So Mel, I'll, I'll go to you if that's okay first. And I believe you're on mute. Yeah, yeah there we go. Um, I would say it's that's a hard one for me, just because we're there's no gathering place per se. Like you can't just direct them back to a school. Um, so I think that would be the challenge. But I do think that you know if you were to look outside of like direct service like this, I think ways that as a community as a whole that we can support these students. It's just recognizing that they have had this loss, but so any opportunity that we have to just congratulate them, to show them some love, just like what you see everyone doing for the healthcare providers and for essential workers, you know, things like that. You know, I saw the video for Wilson and Mount T's um, celebration. Opportunities like that. You know, I know it can't ever be, it can't always be on that scale, but you know, those little things, if you're, you know, if you're a coffee stand, you know, give the kids a free latte. I don't know, whatever. Um, but just, I think that's the thing. It's just that we have to find ways. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be big, but I think students just want to be acknowledged and be seen and just, you know, just to feel like they have accomplished it, you know, because a lot of times they know they've accomplished it, but they need, they, it feels good to hear other people tell you. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, I mean, just because it's something everyone could do regardless of what skill sets they have. That's awesome. No, I appreciate that, Mel. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. I'm going to go to Doug. Same question. Yeah. Um, what Melody said is so important that the, what the kids are feeling now is just unimaginable. No, no one in their wildest dreams could have, or nightmares, would have seen this coming. And so any appreciative um, outreach we can give to our seniors, like uh, the, our cap and gown event was great, but you know, that's one thing. I think um, students should know that teachers and counselors are, are trying to reach them uh, through email. So Mel talked about it early on that, you know, just getting students uh, in the routine of checking their email mm -hmm. uh, when they get out of bed because there's things waiting for them. Um, if they don't have email access, uh, parents, uh, staff members are, are calling their cell phones. So they might look at a, a number that's blocked or they might look at a number they don't recognize. You know, it's probably a teacher or a member of the school trying to reach out to you and make sure you're okay and, and provide you assignments and work so that you can improve your grade or you can get connected with some of the uh, partnerships that I talked about earlier. So just hang in there, seniors. Um, just know that the, your teachers and counselors and administrators care and love you and uh, reach out. You know, we keep reaching out and you keep reaching out to us as well. That's awesome, Doug. Thank you. Thank you for that. Lori, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think one of the gifts and the curses of being in Tacoma is that we have have an abundance of resources and organizations that want to do nothing but support students like these seniors. Um, but oftentimes we can get prescriptive in how we do it and not really stop and ask students what they need. Um, and just in hindsight, I'm grateful that we did that initially because in my mind I was like, oh, well, we can make sure we have tutoring and we need to make these benchmarks and things just kept changing day to day. So just ask students what they need, how they're doing and make that connection with them. Um, because all of us are 
my daughter called me a zombie the other day, like a Zoom zombie. And I was like, you know, you're six. And that's actually pretty accurate. So um, we're all kind of in this like swirl that's going on. And it's, it's easy to forget that like seniors are probably experiencing it at an even amplified um, measure. So yeah, just being that calm in the storm for them and letting them know that there's somebody there that has their back um, is I think really the best thing we could do. Like we do food deliveries and stuff, but the students that got the handwritten cards from us are the ones that um, reached out and were like, thank you for that. Like that was really thoughtful. And it's like, wow, we're giving you cleaning supplies and all this stuff. And really it was this card that you responded to. So um, yeah, just that, that personal emotional side of things and keeping that connection because all of us are kind of stuck in our houses right now and and you forget what it feels like like today I came here and saw coworkers and I didn't realize how excited I would be like I love them all and I know I was going to be excited but like that energy of just oh my gosh people and I'm an extrovert so um yeah I, I would just listen to what they need right now and not always focus on the academic we can weave the educational stuff into the stuff they're really caring about right now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you to all three of you for your insight. I mean, each of you uh, represents kind of a different approach of how we're all supporting seniors, um, and they're all valuable. And I, I really appreciate the time um, that all of you spent. Doug, I think I know you need to hop off a little bit, so thank you. I'm going to go through some Graduate Tacoma updates really fast um, while we do that so we can wrap up on time. But uh, let's see. So the first one is uh, with regard to something that Doug shared, but the what's next senior check-in. So uh, via the Tacoma College Support Network, we've been able to establish a rapid response table with Tacoma Public Schools, as was mentioned, uh, College Success Foundation, Degrees of Change, um, and other organizations, MDC, Lori, I know you were part of those conversations as well, uh, to support high school seniors. So I'm going to pivot and start talking to any senior that's actually on this call. And if you're not, if you know a senior, this is for you. Basically, please let us know what's next for you. Uh, and if you need support by going to graduatetacoma.org slash what's next seniors. Again, graduatetacoma.org slash what's next seniors. So take about five minutes to check in with your community, but we'll co connect you to a real live person who can help you with your next steps after high school, including the folks who were mentioned, CSF, uh, Metropolitan Development Council, and others. Um, in addition to partners like Enhanced Prep for specifically tutoring and other services there. Um, you can connect to this virtual village that Lori mentioned of support. They are hosting drop-in hours on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Sundays to help you with anything from applying to college, making sense of financial aid, homework help, job interviews, whatever that looks like. Um, also, as was mentioned, if you're going to one of the seven local colleges that are listed, you can register for the Zoom to Your Future, a Zoom event on May 28th, where you can meet others going to your same college but also connect with college staff about next steps specifically. And lastly, with regard to that, uh, we wanna make it a little bit incentivized. So we're, you're, you're gonna be entered into a weekly drawing per high school for a $50 gift card each week for four weeks. So again, uh, each of the high schools, we wanna make it kind of worth your time, again, not only to get the services, but a little incentive for a $50 gift card. So again, seniors who are listening, family members, anybody connected to a senior, please spread the word. This will be sent out in the uh, webinar follow-up as well. But we, we're here to support you. We want you uh, to thrive given all of this, and, and we got your back. So uh, that is the update on what's next, senior support. Um, I do have a quick update on our technology access. So to supplement the work we've done with TacomaLearns.org, which is our COVID-19 uh, searchable resource page, Foundation for Tacoma Students, Tacoma Public Schools, and local internet provider Rainer Connect have partnered to increase access to technology for Tacoma students. Uh, with TPS's support, we begin to uh, identify students who do not have the necessary internet bandwidth or devices to participate in this new online learning environment. We've already begun contacting families to get them connected, but that being said, hundreds of other students lack the necessary technology to log in to their online classrooms, and that requires philanthropic support. So the foundation launched a fundraising campaign this week, and this fund is gonna be open to contributions as long as that need exists. We also know that reaching out to students who don't have access to technology, obviously are some of the hardest to reach. So again, if you know anybody that would like to connect to this opportunity, uh, you can learn more 
by visiting the website again at graduatetacoma.org and then navigating the COVID-19 landing page. So those are the two major updates with regard to COVID response. Next week, we're gonna be hosting another Friday forum uh, and the theme will be providing childcare amidst a childcare crisis. And uh, we'll be discussing how Tacoma's capacity to provide childcare is currently holding up through this crisis uh, and this pandemic and, and the future of that field in its aftermath. Please tune in next week, same time, to hear from both state representatives and community partners who are managing the evolving childcare crisis. And you can register for that again at, there's a theme, graduatetacoma.org and navigating the COVID-19 landing page. With that, um, I do wanna thank you again, Doug, Mel, Lori, and especially Fabi for her time, or for all of your time, for sharing a little bit about the work that's happening in Tacoma. Um, thank you again to those who are listening in. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you all.